When most people go to new cities, they're looking at the buildings, but half the time I'm looking at the sidewalk. I'm Julian Beaver, street artist. In this series, I'll be transforming pavements in cities around the world with my 3D chalk drawings. Oh my gosh, you can actually see like the wings are raising up. Plus, revealing the secrets of how I do it. Even faster, you can pour on powder. You rub it all in. And tracking down the world's most prolific street artists. I think the thing about street artists is not defined by one thing, it can be anything. I've arrived in London, Britain's historic capital city. I always love coming to London to do a drawing, especially when it's somewhere near this lovely Thames waterfront and one of the best views in the whole of Europe, I'd say. But even in midsummer, the British weather can be unpredictable. The thing all pavement artists dread is that little ding, 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 and sometimes you imagine it, you think, you think it's raining and it isn't. But I just felt a couple then, I'm sure I did. There's lots of things to choose from in London as subject matter, but the thing I've chosen which really gets me and I think really shouts London is Big Ben. All tall objects are difficult to draw three-dimensionally and that's no exception. And also the clock face I think will be demanding. So I've got my subject matter, now I've got to find my pavement. The reason I've chosen this street to draw on is because we have this beautiful backdrop of St Paul's behind that way. And over this way, we have the Thames, the Millennium Bridge and the Tate Modern over there. And there are lots of passers-by, which always makes things more exciting. And on top of that, a lot of them are interested in art, which is why they're going to that building anyway. What I've been trying to do here is look for a spot where I can incorporate various items of street furniture or walls into the drawing so that we have a vertical and a horizontal. And what we have is a wall, and I'm going to use this edge here right along to this edge as my front surface. We can even get a second side coming from this edge that will all come in to make a big tower that goes from the pavement up onto the wall. And then I think I could get a really spectacular result. My only concern is that it's a bit bigger than I would have liked to have done, but that's a challenge. The drawing will only work when you look at it from this camera. Here, it's going to be big enough to have a real person standing in it, whilst at the same time it's not getting completely out of hand in size. That's about as big as I can do in three days. In fact, it's more than I can do in three days. I've really got to fight on this one to get it done. But before I even pick up a piece of chalk, the raindrops start falling. Actually, there is something you can do, which is to throw a cover over it. It might stop this ground getting wet before we start. Of course, if this was in the Tate Modern across the road, this would stand as a valid work of art in its own right, and I wouldn't have to do anything else. <laughs> London's street art scene is dominated by guerrilla art, a subversive underground movement spearheaded by the notoriously anonymous Banksy, whose satirical work combining stenciling with graffiti has received worldwide recognition. Banksy has single-handedly lifted street art to a new level, but do his fellow street artists see it as a good thing? He's actually broadened people's horizons to, to what art is, but personally, it's not my cup of tea. If you want to reach the most people, you really want to use a more universal imagery in a way, because just makes sense and that's why Banksy has done so well because he's really got universal stuff that everyone can understand but it's still got that edge of you know I'm mysterious no one knows who I am you know I risk what I do to do it 
It's cool. I, I like what he does. It's political and it says something. You know. And he's getting paid lots and lots of money, and I hope one day someone will recognise me and I can get paid loads of money. But back on my street, the rain has stopped and I can start drawing. That's rain delay number one. I've lost about 20 minutes there, which isn't too important, but let's just hope there aren't any more. The first day is always about marking in the construction of the drawing, the composition, usually in white chalk, just the outline. But this is the slow, difficult part of the operation, but it's important to get it correct. Once that's done, the rest follows a lot more quickly. To make an exactly straight line, so I just put a bit of chalk along the string and twang. It's a technique that the old masters used to use, for example, Vermeer, there's a famous picture where you can see the pinprick in the canvas where he had his string tied to. With the basic shape of the tower completed, I'm moving on to Big Ben's tricky clock face. As I'm drawing the whole thing in a distortion, an anamorphic distortion, it's particularly difficult. One of the things I remember one of my school teachers said to me about art was that Although I was good at it, I kept safely within my boundaries. And I, you know, it quite hit me, it hit me forcefully when he said that in my school report. And from then on, really, I think I, to some extent, tried to go outside my boundaries a bit more. And uh, this is an example. I mean, I could safely go for a, a monument that didn't have a difficult circle in it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try and go outside my boundaries just to get my own back on that school teacher. <laughs> Do you want to take a look? Tell me if you think this circle's correct. <laughs> Don't quite know what I'm looking for. Does that look like a circle on the same plane as that wall? I'm probably not the best judge. Maybe, maybe well, Haley's got a better idea. I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like a circle yet. It doesn't look like a circle yet? No. Oh, dear. I have to spend another hour on it then. <laughs> Just getting there. Yeah. Well, we've been watching you do this for about the last half hour. Uh-huh. It takes a long time to get the perspective right, it seems. You're right. But this is on perhaps the most difficult part of the whole process. Well, it looks awful. <laughs> I am going back to square one again with this circle, and if I don't get that right, everything's going to lead off wrong from it. This clock face is a, a series of concentric circles and parallel lines and correct angles and it's just a bloody nightmare to get it correct on a deadline. I think I should stop going on about that now, don't you? With the clock face finally done, I can start on something more meaty. I want this to start looking now like a three-dimensional tower coming from the pavement and up out of the pavement. I want the colour to blend precisely in tone and colour with this wall so that it looks like one going down. To cover a large area fast, I'm not going to use chalk, I'm going to use powder. I just sprinkle it on and then rub it on with the, this polystyrene. As much as anything, I want to do this to build some confidence in myself that this, is, this drawing is actually working, because so far it's just been a struggle. Ooh. I'm going to chuck in some of the, uh, the other brown in a minute, so that, like those bricks, there's a certain amount of variation within it. Hello, Mr. Pigeon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Day one is always the biggest struggle because all the difficult headwork has to be done first. Now the next step I'm going to do is look at this face of the wall and do pretty much the same thing on this 90 degree angle. This side of the tower is better lit than that side so that it's slightly lighter. 
so that we have a light side and a slightly shaded side. That, again, will give it a bit more three-dimensionality. When I look up and see all these people crowding around and watching, it, it does bring back memories of when I used to do this as a busker on Oxford Street and other places, just for money and a half. It's worth remembering that if you can survive by just getting money in a hat, it's because people like what you do. I would like to see some of the modern artists that are in the Tate Modern come out onto the streets and make money in a hat with their artwork. London's guerrilla art has its roots in graffiti, but due to crackdowns by local police and councils, artists are being forced off the streets, even when the walls are legal, like this graffiti jam in Turnham Green. This is a Hall of Fame, so it's been painted for the last 21 years. A Hall of Fame is a legal spot uh, where you're allowed to paint and you won't get arrested. Everybody needs somewhere to paint. And there's a lot of people. You'd be surprised how many graffiti writers there are. Graffiti uses every type of art form known to man, like perspective, colour design, uh, character design. It's really interesting working on a massive scale and making massive areas of colour and shape. Tagging is the most important part of graffiti. It's where people learn how to work their letters and get different styles, really. And a lot of parks are getting shut down very soon, all the halls of fame. Purely, I think, because it's the Olympics and the government are trying to shut them all down so people haven't got anywhere to go to express themselves. And they're also emulsioning like, all the track sides, so it's making it very, very hard. Well, this, this wall's getting closed down in about three weeks. It, it is forcing people to paint more illegally, and it is actually maybe turning them onto trying to approach the canvas side of it. You know, and approaching galleries and, and trying to do shows and, and, and maybe sell their work. I'm on my second day, but the weather hasn't been kind to me or my drawing. There was quite a lot of rain last night, and this morning you can see the water all over these covers I put on. These covers are never foolproof, so... Uh, it remains to be seen what's underneath there. I suspect it might all be pretty wet. This is the bit people don't see when they look at my website or in my portfolio. They don't see all the background hassle and difficulties and boring bits. So, here we go. I'll try and get this off in one nice movement so the water flows off the drawing and not onto it. Actually, at first glance, it looks remarkably well preserved. Still a lot of heavy cloud around. And worst of all, the weather forecast is not good for this afternoon. So there we are on the same points as yesterday. All set up, ready to go. I need to get going. The first job of the day is working on the clock face detail. It is lovely to be working in front of such an 